So you want to get better at docking, do you? Well, you came to the right place, because in this video we're going to go to Minmus. <laughs> okay, let me just backtrack here. So one of the comments I get asked most of, a lot, is how to get better at docking. And my general answer to this isn't just keep building space stations in LKO or practice docking things in LKO, because whilst this is a valid way of getting better, the way I learned how to dock was to uh, do missions to Minmus and things like that, and just have a separate lander from the main mothership that would detach, land, and then fly back up and dock. And because Minmus and Mun are obviously much smaller than Kerbin, it's much, much easier to dock like this. And then once you get confidence at that, then you can go on to uh, trying out docking at Kerbin and things like that. But here we are just ascending, this is the rocket we've got, it's ludicrously overkill for Minmus, but I really like the design and so I wanted to show it off. And this rocket is of course available to download in the description if you want to try and recreate this mission to a T. Here we are, we can see we're almost uh, about 50 seconds to a minute away from our apoapsis, we can start to fly flatter here. Now you saw that red flames just appearing just then, you don't really want to get those, because it generally means that you're wasting too much energy fighting the air resistance rather than sort of you know, getting into orbit. Now if you want a detailed tutorial on getting into orbit then this is probably not the video for you. There are plenty of good ones out there, so I'm just kind of skipping forward through this sort of stage of the video I guess uh, quite quickly because we want to get to the real crux of this video. Now I thought to make things interesting we'd make it an Apollo style mission uh, in which we have a lander that's situated below the main crew module and then we have to kind of reassemble it in orbit. However, unlike Apollo, we're going to actually sort of orient the lander in the correct position whilst we're still in low Kerbin orbit. In fact, we're going to do it before we're even in a stable orbit, just because... Um you know, I'm a thug like that. I mean, if, you are, if you're are, if you not feeling too confident, you can circularize and then sort of do it when there's no risk. But I thought it'd be better to do it when we're on a suborbital trajectory, just because then the lower stage won't stay in orbit. It will end up crashing back to Earth, or crashing back to Kerbin, should I say? So there we are. We've got a periapsis of 43,000, so it won't take much energy just to circularize ourselves. And behold, our Minmus lander. So, I mean, it's quite small, as you can probably tell, but you really don't need that much fuel for Minmus, given that Minmus has very low gravity. And there goes the launch escape system, which is a completely unnecessary in Kerbal Space Program, because if anything did go wrong, you would just revert the flight. But some of you might be playing on super hardcore mode, where you can't revert flights. Although, if you are that kind of player, you probably know how to dock already, but you know, let's not get caught up on that. And there goes our booster stage. So, according to Kerbal Engineer Redux, we now have 8 minutes and 8 seconds before we reach Apoapsis. And since our main engine is now trapped between the crew cabin and the lander, we want to make sure that our ship is all kind of reconstructed in the right way before we reach Apoapsis. So as you can see, I transferred a Kerbal into the lander can just as a precautionary measure. Uh, the lander itself doesn't have any RCS thrusters, so it won't actually be doing any of the main docking itself. Uh, just in case we, we end up knocking it, we just want to spin it around a little bit so it's facing the right direction using its reaction wheels. We can do so, but it looks like this went pretty smoothly. I mean, this is a fairly simple operation, so you shouldn't run into any problems here. And look at that, we are now in the correct configuration, so we can go ahead and point ourselves prograde and then detach the decoupler. Now the reason we attached the landers to a docking node rather than straight on to a decoupler was the fact that when you detach a decoupler it provides quite a bit of thrust and so would have sent the lander shooting backwards which wouldn't have been too much of a problem but it would have made docking with it a little bit trickier. Whereas if you use a docking node like I did here it stays relatively stationary when you detach it so it just makes things far far easier when it comes to sort of reattaching it to the front of the ship. And here we go, we are basically in orbit now, so we can just fire up that engine and get ourselves nice and circular, and look at that, we are in orbit, which uh, is not that impressive of an achievement, let's face it, but <laughs> I digress, uh, we're going to go ahead and add a manoeuvre node and drag it out and get a rough encounter with Minmus, which unfortunately can take a little while to do sometimes as Minmus is on that awkward inclined orbit but uh, it's not something that you should be intimidated by. As you can see I've gone for a very rough encounter here, we're not going to be getting straight into Minmus's SOI on this burn alone but we're going to be getting roughly to the right altitude and then we can do a correction burn in deeper space where it won't take much delta V just to correct our inclination and we should be good to go. So there goes our orbit there and we've not got an encounter but if we just add another maneuver node here you can see that we can make one. <laughs> There you go, you can try to see just by tweaking the uh, normal and anti-normal nodes, radial in, radial out, and prograde and retrograde. You just by playing around with it, you can get a rough uh, encounter with Mimus. It's not too difficult to do. And yeah, that's 
that's all I have to say about that really, but here we are just burning away now as you can see it's not even 100 delta V required for this manoeuvre node, so no, what is there? And then we can just obviously set ourselves up for a circularization burn. Some people ask how I get these camera shots, by the way, where the planet sort of stays stationary in the background relative to the ship and you just use the free camera. So press V once and you'll get free camera. And I do not know why that's not the default camera instead of auto, which is a horrible camera mode because it does that weird spinning thing where everything revolves around when you get into a circular orbit. This is kind of a minor complaint with Kerbal Space Program, but it's just something that's like, why is the nav ball not automatically open when you open the map view? Yeah, whatever, whatever. And here we are in orbit around Minimus. So you can see that uh, satellite network working really well there. So when we're on the dark side of the planet, we still have a connection to Kerbin, which obviously we have Kerbals on board this ship, so it's not very necessary. But it's just an example of, say, if this was just a probe mission, we would still be able to contact the tracking center. So... All good things all around, really. So we can just go ahead and detach that lander now, move our mothership out of the way, switch back to the lander, and begin our burn retrograde. So we're going to be going heading for the, the Greater Flats, which is where all new players should be aiming for, ready for Minmus. Uh, well, I guess anywhere on Minmus isn't particularly difficult to land on, but this is just especially easy to land on as it's, well, as it's completely flat. Uh, now this lander, um, not, I wouldn't say overkill, but it doesn't need that communications aerial just because we do have a Kerbal controlling it, but you know, it, it looks nice. <laughs> so as you see we're just burning, and you can see it takes very, very little fuel just to um, slow ourselves down sufficiently to land. There we are, just playing around with the slider. Da -da 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 -da. And look at that. Now, I like to touch down going at very, very low speed, like less than 0.5 meters per second is what I personally like to aim for. But the reality is that Minmus is so forgiving that you can crash down much, much faster and sustain no damage. And even if the landing legs did break, it doesn't really matter a great deal. I mean, to be honest, most of my Minmus landers don't even incorporate landing legs because like I say, you don't need them for Minmus, at least not desperately. I mean, I guess I do like to use them just because it adds a little bit of realism to the ship and makes it look more science fiction-y, I guess, for want of a better term there. But uh, yeah, you don't need them. So we actually have way like, loads of fuel left, so we can just go and visit another biome quickly. Now, the easiest way of doing this from the Greater Flats is to just land somewhere that isn't flat. So we're going to go ahead and aim for that mountain if I actually steer the ship in the correct direction and don't take us on a on a different route but there we go just uh, we're just going to be going there and flying there now using our initial velocity that should get us the whole way we don't need to do any more burning now so we're just going to keep an eye on the ground we can also uh, sort of keep spamming that science equipment that will tell us when we're in a different biome and then once we've picked a landing spot we can just kill off all our horizontal velocity first is what I generally like to do before then spinning ourselves around and killing off vertical speed as we go down as well. Now I think what I accidentally did here was uh, line ourselves up so we'd be landing on a slope which is Again, it's not really too much of a problem on Minmus, because Minmus is extremely forgiving, has low gravity, it's not a problem. But for the Mun, you don't really want to be landing on a slope. So I thought, just for realism's sake, we'd just adjust our landing spot slightly, so we'd end up on a relatively flat section of ground, and then we can just point ourselves retrograde, and slow ourselves down to a stop. There we go, just extending the ladder again, getting our... our getting our science sorted out, gathering the data, getting our Kerbal onto the surface, all that shebang. You know, you can plant your flag, get your surface sample, bish bash bosh, and then off we go again. So we're just going to go ahead and cut to the map screen here. And we're going to go ahead and set our mothership as our target. And just for the video, I'm going to warp, so we're going to be launching during the day. But because this is Minmus, we're going to be launching with our target as slightly ahead of us. Normally, if you were launching on Kerbin, you'd be launching with the target slightly behind you because of the fact that it takes a very long time for a Kerbin ship to get off the launch pad through the atmosphere and into orbit. By the time you're in orbit, the orbiting ship that you were trying to dock with has shot far ahead of you. However, because this is Minmus, there is no atmosphere to fight through, uh, so you can very, very quickly get up to a high velocity. So because our orbital trajectory will be inside our target orbit, we're going to be going a lot faster relative to the target so we're going to need the target to be slightly ahead of us in order to dock with it on our first sort of try if that makes sense. I'd like to try and get a pretty close encounter uh, within one orbit and that looks like what we've done. We've ended up getting an encounter almost immediately without any correction burns necessary. Now a lot of people have been asking, Matt you godlike Galahant guru, how on earth do you even get intercepts like that straight away? And the answer my friends is 
F5 and F9. It's just a matter of trial and error really. You just have one go. If it's not a very close orbit, you can just quick load and go again. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. You don't need to get targets as accurate as this, but I think for videos, it just looks nicer when you can get a target intercept pretty much sort of off the bat without needing to do any sort of correction burns. But you know, that's just a quite a niche thing. I imagine most of you aren't making Kerbal Space Program videos, and if you are, you probably don't need this tutorial. So we are just going to be fine tuning our encounter by using our normal and anti-normal node. You can also use your uh, radial in and radial out nodes, and even if you're feeling very wild, your prograde and retrograde <laughs> markers. I, I feel like I'm stalling here, there's not really a lot to say, you can kind of see for yourself what's going on in the video, I feel like that's doing most of the talking for you. If you're still not quite confident in terms of which markers are best to use, you can just create a maneuver node ahead of you and then just play around with that and then you know go from there like i say you don't don't feel pressurized into getting your encounter within one orbit like this you can take as many orbits as you want at the end of the day it's all just about patience i've just done this a lot of times so it's pretty much second nature to me at this point but when i was first starting out i could do several orbits before i could get even remotely close to the target so don't feel pressurized in terms of sort of getting close to this but the way i managed to get this good at doing encounters is by doing missions like this so from now on try and set yourself the goal of having every mission to the Mun and Minmus having a separate lander and a separate mothership that have to dock in orbit it just you'll just very quickly find that although it may be a bit of a struggle at first you'll be surprised how quickly it takes to get sort of encounters like this with relative ease anyway as we're now approaching our target we're going to point ourselves retrograde relative to the target so you want to make sure your nav ball says target so as you can see we are moving 23.5 meters per second faster than the target so uh let's see if we can find yeah when you when you're encountering this close and you're on minmus which is pretty small you'll more than likely be able to see the target itself and be able to eyeball it so we're just going to actually increase the vacuum ambient light setting there in planet shine just to make it a little bit easier for you to see what's going on now as you may have noticed this lander has no rcs thrusters so it can't actually do any of the docking itself we're going to be doing that with the mothership which is what the original apollo, apollo missions did so there we go <laughs> but we can help ourselves out by using the reaction wheels on the lander to at least point ourselves in the correct direction so then we can just set that docking node as our target point ourselves towards it and it actually won't take very much rcs at all to just complete the docking basically so i like using the h n i j k l controls to do the docking you can use docking mode and that switches the thrusters to use WASD to control the ship. I don't really like doing that personally. I like using J, K, L and I for the orientation control and H and N for forwards and backwards mo movements. But, you know, it's all about personal preference. So here we are, all docked and all all docked all docked so yeah we can just take the data from the lander can and put it all in the mothership and then what we can do is point ourselves prograde and accelerate make sure make sure your lander's engine is disabled though uh, and then we can just burn away and say goodbye to minmus and then what we can do is point ourselves retrograde again and burn if you really wanted to be efficient you would do this at apoapsis to save fuel but we have well we have lots of fuel left so there's no need and i accidentally ended up uh, encountering Mimus again, but it doesn't really matter. Mimus's gravity is way too small to have any meaningful impact on your orbit, so it's not a problem. And then we can just detach the lander. Now we know we're on a suborbital trajectory, and the lander will be destroyed in Kerbin's atmosphere. And not a lot more to say about that, really. So, <laughs> yeah, as you can see, you can see there very quickly. I've been st I stored the batteries and monopropellant ta tanks within that shroud. For the heat shield and within the giant decoupler i really hope squad replaces that because it's such an ugly piece and there we go the parachutes are deployed we can jettison the heat shield although it's not in completely necessary and there we go as you can see this is a slightly older version of ksp because nowadays the <laughs> in these modern times the parachutes will separate themselves as you descend um but not not in this video <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. This is kind of a much more of a laid back commentary, kind of like my Juno return mission. But, uh, you know, I think it's just I just wanted to kind of get the point across that this is how I got good at docking. It's just by practicing on things like Mun and Minmus, places that really sort of illustrate not only how to dock, but also show you some practical applications for docking rather than just building space stations. But I hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed my little rambling and video. And yes, see you. Um, See you next time. <laughs>